Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb. I hope you're having a great day today. So a special welcome to all my math majors that are out there. So math is something that I have always really been passionate about and coming out of high school, I did seriously consider becoming a math major because I really wanted to learn more about it. Now, I ended up going the economics route and economics, it's very common for a lot of econ majors to double in math or anything like that. So I got a lot of friends that are math majors and in part that really inspired this video as well. So so in this video, I'm going to go over the top 10 highest paying jobs for math majors. Now, I am going to go from 10 to 1 with number 1 being the highest paying one. But I really don't want you to skip all the way to number 1 because A, salary isn't the most important thing, and B, somewhere along the way you might find a job that you're interested in. So I recommend sticking around and just seeing if any of these that I talk about pique your interest. So without any further ado, let's get into it and let's start talking about the top 10 highest paying jobs for math majors. And if you're new here, my name is Calvin Rabb. I make videos all about economics and the job market. So if you're interested in anything like that, I would love it if you would subscribe. Coming in at number 10 is a systems engineer making about $77,768 base average salary per year. Now, this is base average salary, so this is without any bonuses or anything like that. And of course, this is gonna ch change depending on where you live, where you work, and anything like that. So just take it as a ballpark. But a systems engineer, the best way to describe what you're gonna do here, I think, is through an analogy. If you've ever hung out with me, you know, had lunch with me, or spent any time with me, you know I love my analogies. So think of a systems engineer as a coach. And here you have a goal. And the goal here may be to finish this one project or something like that. And what you're gonna do is create the system to which that goal will be accomplished. So you're gonna look at all the different things that should be done and create this system, create this workflow in order to get it done. So with that explanation, this may sound like a lot like a business position, but it's not. It's got engineer in there. So not only do you have to understand strategy, maybe business strategy or anything like that, but you're an engineer. You have to understand the technical aspects in order to create this system. So you'll likely be working in more of a technical field, a technical company, you know, rather than a purely business oriented leadership company. And this is such a high paying job because you do both things. You have to understand the leadership and strategy and business of things as well as understanding the engineering on it as well. So that's why it's so high paying and if you're interested in anything like that, this may be something that you want to look into. Coming in at number nine is an aerospace engineer who's going to be making just under $84,000 per year. So when you think of aerospace engineering, likely the first thing that you jump to is planes and maybe just the creation of commercial aircrafts, anything like that. And although that is kind of a big part of it, it's not everything. There's so much more that goes into aerospace engineering. And this is always interesting. My roommate actually used to be an aerospace engineer, so it's always enjoyable to talk to him about it and kind of understand that field a little bit more than I do kind of originally before uh, we were rooming together. But aerospace engineers do so much more than just dealing with the creation of commercial aircrafts. You know, they will deal with, of course, air Crafts, but also spacecrafts and satellites and missiles and so much more than that. And a lot of your job is just going to be the creation and testing of prototypes to make sure they match all safety aspects and anything else that you maybe want to doing, design aspects, and there's so much more here. And if you're passionate about this field, as I know many people are, this may be something that you want to pursue. Coming in at number eight, and now you're heading over to my side of things in the finance realm, and that is a financial advisor making just under $89,000 per year base average salary. So a financial advisor, again, it's really in the name, but you are helping someone out with their finances, and it's so much more than that. It's gonna be helping them with financial planning, investment strategies, uh, retirement strategies, and so much more than that to taxes and anything like that. Sometimes people can come to you with some messy finances and it's your job to really clean it up and create a plan going forward. Now this is something that you're going to need a little bit more certifications for and it really changes depending you know exactly what type of financial advisor you want to be. There's many different types and different certifications that you need for each but if you're interested in finance at all this may be something a route that you want to go on. You of course will have to be a good people person as well, good communication skills, good at working with other people so this may be something if if you think you check all those boxes, then this may be something that you want to look more into. 
Coming in at number seven is an astronomer who's gonna be making just under $89,000 as well. So an astronomer is gonna be someone who actively studies and collects data on things outside the scope of Earth. You know, you are gonna be studying comets and galaxies and moons and different things that are just beyond the Earth and oftentimes light years away. It's a pretty fascinating field. And if you're interested in this at all, you're just gonna be, not just, but you're gonna be collecting data, making sense of it, doing research, you oftentimes focus in on one particular type of space. So maybe you are very passionate or very focused on asteroids or something like that. And you'll be studying that. And within astronomy, there's a lot of math. And I'm sure you've encountered maybe some of the math that exists in kind of the astronomy world and, you know, different physics of things and different things like that. So if at all that interests you, then this may be something that you want to look into and you can do some pretty cool stuff as an astronomer. Coming in at number six is an actuary. And an actuary is gonna be making just under $91,000 per year. So the best way to describe what an actuary does is you are studying the financial aspects that go into risk and really calculating what financial risks there are out there for you. So when you think of risks and finances, the first place you usually jump is insurance. And that's because insurance is in the business of risks. So insurance companies hire a lot of actuaries. And the reason is because actuaries go out and look at all this data and run a lot of complex equations and models of you know, what's the probability that this will happen? And if it does, what is the financial output that we would have to help them for? And then you will help try to map how much this insurance should cost based on all the data, you know, making sure it's a fair price so the company still makes money, but enough to be competitive with other competitors that are in the same market as you. So as you can see, there's a lot that needs to be done here and you really have to get it right because Otherwise, insurance companies won't make any money and they'll lose to their competitors. So as you can probably tell, being an actuary is a big, important job. And because of that, it pays a lot as well. Coming in at number five is a neuropsychologist. And this person is going to be making just under $93,000 per year. So neuropsychologist, as you can see from the term neuro inside, you can probably imagine this has to do with the brain and you would be correct. So a neuropsychologist is someone who really studies the connection between brain function and motor skills. And oftentimes here, you're going to be studying the effect of different diseases, say on the nervous system or something like that, and how that affects not only our fine motor skills, but also the brain function in general and trying to understand more about the relationship between our motor, our fine motor skills, motor skills, and brain function in general. So if this is something that you're interested in as far as, you know, the brain itself, which is a fascinating, fascinating area of study and kind of maybe the psychological effects of it and anything like that, then maybe this is something you want to look into. And there's so much here that we don't know or we don't understand and you will be helping bridging the gap of a lot of our understanding. So maybe this is something that you want to look into. Coming at number four is a physicist and they're going to be making just over $94,000 per year. So a physicist, again, is one of those huge general terms with many different specificities inside of it. But for the most part, a physicist at a very general level is just really studying and trying to identify the principles that govern the natural world. Now, that is a very general observation or at least description of a physicist. There's a lot of different things you can go into. I personally know a physicist who really studies lasers, which is pretty fascinating. But there's so much you can do here, usually focus on something and usually to become a full-fledged physicist, you will need some type of doctorate degree, you know, PhD in physics or something along those lines. But if you are a math major, you likely have taken your fair share of physics classes. And, you know, if you're really fascinated by it and you really enjoyed it, then maybe this is something that you want to look into. Coming in at number three is a cryptographer. And a cryptographer is going to be making just over $99,000 per year. So a cryptographer is dealing with all things security. So oftentimes what a lot of people don't realize that aren't in the field is that security is a huge industry within itself. And every company has so many people working on, and a large percentage of people at companies are just purely focusing on security. So 
what you're gonna be doing here as a cryptographer is you're gonna be creating a lot of mathematically based encryption methods in order to keep the data secure of a company. Because oftentimes a company's lifeline or importance of it is to keep that data secure. A lot of companies have so much data. We live in a data-driven world and they have to keep that secure. You know, you see how big a deal it is when companies have a data breach of some sort and it can be a huge fallout. Stocks can plummet, billions of dollars can be lost and a lot of companies can go under. So as you can see, this encryption, this importance of security is so, so important. And it's because of that, that this is such a high paying job as well. Coming at number two is a data scientist making over $113,000 per year. So a data scientist, what you're gonna be doing here at a holistic level is dealing with big data as you probably expected. But as I mentioned, we live in a data-driven world where companies are collecting more data than ever before. And oftentimes this data can just come in as mumbo jumbo, whole bunch of numbers making absolutely no sense. So then your job is to go in there and make sense of it. Because oftentimes this data is invaluable to companies and they need that information, but they just don't understand that data that they're collecting. So you go in there and you make sense of that data. You know, you sift through it. And oftentimes this is done through something like Excel or a lot of programming language. There's a lot of data science that's now done in Python programming, which I'm interested in. I really enjoy Python and I've been trying to learn it at a higher level. So that's something that I've been looking to data science from a Python programming perspective, but that's a little bit of a side tangent here. But but what you're gonna be doing here is making sense of this data, coming up with you know, different ways of understanding and trying to come up with a few reasons for that data. And then you will likely present it to other people within the industry, you know, or not industry, but the business, you know, within finance department or executive staff or anything like that, showing them that this is the data. Now, at jobs that I've had, I've talked to a lot of data science people that have been there, and a large part of their job is also dealing with predictive modeling because businesses really value kind of seeing what comes next. And I, I've done it in the financial realm, you know, creating financial models to try to predict future cash flows and different things like that. But data scientists oftentimes take it to the next step in mapping, you know, what will the business do from looking at the data? How will it perform in the future? Coming in at number one is an information research scientist making just under $116,000 per year. So this again is a pretty general one that you, from company to company and just kind of field of study to field of study, this exact job title will change and you'll have different jobs and just different projects that you may be working on. But as far as an information research scientist from a very high level, what you're gonna be doing here is you're gonna be designing new approaches to to computing technology and you're gonna be trying to innovate uses for existing technology. And the thing that I always find interesting about this job is it's a research position, but it's pushing kind of, and you're being a little entrepreneurial and innovative when it comes to things like computing technologies. And when I say computing technologies, that's just a very, very general term. And all it is is just any activity where a computer is dealing with information. So a lot of data scientists, of course, will deal with a lot of the technologies that you either create or find and things like that. And this one's interesting, you know, if you are an active learner and you really enjoy problem solving and things like that, which a lot of math majors do, you know, oftentimes it's instilled inside a math major to always seek out the answer to a problem or something like that. And this is a research position, really. You know, you are a scientist, a research scientist, and here you'll be able to really use those skills of innovation, entrepreneurial, and really using those math skills to try to create new technologies. So that's a very general term. If you wanna learn more, you can, of course, look it up more and see what it really entails as far as job prospects at different uh, companies and different fields and different areas of study. And if that's something that interests you, that is an amazing job. And because it's so important, you know, innovation is what pushes the world forward. You can see why it's such a high paying job. You know, it is the highest on the list, making over $115,000 per year base average salary. So that will wrap it up. Those are the 10 highest paying jobs that I see for math majors. Now, I do wanna turn the question to you. 
Are there any that I missed? Or do you think there's any jobs that should be in here that are high paying? Or just what are your thoughts on these? You know, do you agree with me on them? Do you disagree with me on them? You know, just what are your thoughts? I would love to have a great conversation with you down in the comments below. And math is an amazing major to have. You know, sometimes I do wish I did become a math major. I, I do love econ, but um, sometimes I do look at the math courses and they look really fascinating. So kudos to if you're a math major, you guys are a fascinating group of people and I love all my friends that are math majors. So I really look forward to talking to you guys in the comments below and just seeing what your thoughts are on the job prospects, career prospects for a math major. But that will wrap it up. If you're new here, my name is Calvin Rabb and I would really love it if you would subscribe. But for the, in the meantime, I hope you found some value in this video. And as always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm going to move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you are going to see my most recent video. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you're going to see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb, and I'll see you soon.